My name is Charles Ellis with the University of Missouri Extension, uh, regional ag engineering specialist, uh, primarily housed in the east central part of the state. Uh, I work with uh, cover crops and, and no-till production systems. So I'm going to talk to you today about um, compaction, uh, kind of the uh, symptoms of compaction, uh, causes of compaction, uh, really uh, how, how to uh, manage and, and maybe diagnose that. Uh, it's really kind of a um, hard um, issue to put black and white numbers on. Uh, uh, we know uh, compaction you know, happens. Uh, you know, we've progressed from small equipment to much larger equipment. Uh, with our uh, weather conditions we're experiencing since last fall into this spring, uh, with the high rainfall amounts, we've been on fields with heavy equipment that caused compaction issues. And um, kind of the uh, result of that is, is really kind of unknown, uh, depending upon on growing conditions. So when we're looking about uh, trying to diagnose compaction, there's, there's multiple ways of doing it. We can um, use an instrument like this, a, a soil penetrometer, and um, it will measure resistance uh, of the probe going through the soil. Uh, and so we've got a gauge here, and uh, you know, as the gauge progresses, we're getting more restrictive layers. Uh, what we've done is we've, we've reduced the porosity of the soil. We've, we've, soil is 50% you know, substance, and the rest is, is made up of, of air, air and water. So when we compact the soil, we're removing uh, that air component. So when we get to the, you know, the dial here, it is not a, a hard number, I guess, so to speak. The reading it'll give us today is not going to be what it might give us two weeks from now. You know, when it dries out or even gets more wet, if that's possible, uh, those numbers will be uh, different. So that, that tool can be very uh, beneficial in, in giving us a kind of a profile reading as, as we see changes going through the soil. You know, uh, for us to uh, go out in the lawn here and compare that reading with, with the field out there is really not going to give us a whole lot of information. So uh, that, that it can be useful in kind of diagnosing what may be going on through the profile. But if we go today and go back in August, uh, the readings are going to be different. Uh, the, the relative differences may be the same. But uh, so that's kind of a, a tool to kind of see if we've got a tillage layer, you know, in the soil profile that's causing some restrictions. So that's one way. Uh, another way would just be, uh, you know, a spade, shovel. Uh, feeling the, the force of that change as you're going through the soil. Uh, visual symptoms um, would be uh, poor, you know, water ponding you know, in the field, uh, poor root growth. Uh, and here we've got some samples of, of some uh, corn, you know, all planted uh, the same day, uh, probably within you know, 50 to 100 feet of each other. You can tell this one is much, you know, much smaller than that one. There's not much difference in, in leaf stage, but their the height is, is much different. And if you look at that, uh, you know, first, you know, when you dig that up, um, this was planted into a, uh, a wetter area of the field. And if you see the root growth here, it's just pretty much following that seed trench. So we've got sidewall compaction of the seed trench uh, going on. Um, you can see the roots just growing straight out. Kind of two-dimensional type of root growth. And when we get that lot, um, you know, less root mass there, we get a reduction of nutrient uptake, reduction of water uptake, and we end up with a, you know, smaller plant. So I guess if I was really wanting to go out and find one of these, I, I would look kind of on the in rows, you know, wherever things may be loaded, uh, you know, just visually look across the field, to, you know, to see what, uh, you know, the producer definitely would want to see the whole field of, of this, you know, and then, uh, you know, as, as growing season goes on, some of these, these plants may develop some nutrient deficiencies because of the, the poor root development. If we move down to this next one, we're kind of in the middle here. Uh, we've got, you know, not, not as bad, but we got some roots kind of getting outside that seed trench. Plants a little bit healthier, but still not to, you know, what we'd like to see uh, with this one. And if um, you know, right here, we've kind of got roots going all the way around that crown. So we've got a pretty healthy, and if we pick that up and we saw roots hanging down, we, you know, we could see that uh, we, we don't have the root restrictions that we did with these other two. So that's kind of a, uh, this is probably a symptom of a lot of cornfields this spring. You know, some poor 
planting conditions where we're going to get some root growth that's going to be restrictive. They're going to show up as nutrient deficiency, you know, slow growth, things like that. Now, if we go down to this piece right here, uh, if we want to look at another diagnosis of, uh, you know, compaction, if we look at that soil profile, it's pretty platy, isn't it? So this is kind of an example. It's extreme, uh, taken out of a field road, you know, gets disc up, smoothed down. So this, I guess you'd call it kind of the extreme measure of, of compaction where we've got just these plates that kind of come off. Uh, you'll get, you know, you'll get quick uh, germination because that seed is probably not too deep into the ground. It's crumbly. It'll germinate quickly, but uh, survival is going to be iffy, you know, slow growth. Uh, you know, if we dug roots in that later in the summer, you'd probably just see a lot of horizontal roots there. So when we're working with uh, cover crops with compaction, you know, one of them would be cereal rye. Uh, and we're trying, you know, cereal rye has got a very fibrous, root zone and so by incorporating them we're trying to you know build up that resiliency raise the organic matter I mean the, the roots are are helping to support that soil in addition to the top growth you know you know helping to support that you know long term with some organic matter so that's one of the reasons uh, you know of trying to use the the cover crops um, I guess cereal rye is would not be uh, maybe not the most aggressive root development cover crop, but it's, it's a good uh, kind of middle of the road. Uh, it's easy to control, easy to establish, kind of a lower management uh, type of cover crop. So we're kind of trying to mimic, you know, this is kind of a native uh, prairie, some old CRP with some warm season grasses. And you know, if you look at that, you know, it's kind of hard to see. You got a lot of you know, roots growing down deep. This is about a 20 year stand, you know, and you kind of see, you know, even the topsoil, you know, depth is, is kind of blended in there with that. So uh, we're just trying to manage with the heavy equipment. Uh, we're trying to manage compaction, I guess, and not say none's going to happen. I mean, uh, if we're in dry conditions, we're, you know, we can pretty drive anywhere, but uh, some of the things we'd be looking at is tracked equipment. Uh, Maybe even um, you know designated runways or, or, or guidance lines where we're running the equipment in the same track, kind of um, sacrificing a small portion of the field, uh, you know, in order to control traffic is what we would call that. Is just to uh, to be able to um, be able to you know keep the other rest of the field from being compacted. So it's uh, you know uh, we can write a lot of articles, talk about people not staying off of wet fields. And, uh, you know, when the, when the calendar gets to a point, you know, a lot of, you know, of these things will happen. Um, you know, this is in the same field plan the same day and, and trying to, you know, we have very, very variability in the fields or is quite, you know, is a lot. So, you know, you kind of have to pick a median of, of when I'm going to do that uh, tillage and, and planting.